Hello friends and welcome back to the channel, Junior with the Classic VW Bucks. So let me tell you a little bit about um, Casper. So I think if you recall about a year ago, I purchased Casper, the Rusty Bus, and I just went and got it and delivered it here and it's been sitting in the garage ever since nothing done to it. As a matter of fact, I'm actually using it as a storage compartment unit. Um, anyway, uh, let me show you what's going on with this uh, bus right now. So the bus needs a lot of repairs and um, uh, body work, the underneath uh, chassis needs a lot of TLC. Uh, the bus came with a what appears to be a 1600 dual port. Um, my assumption is that at some point that was a engine that was installed into a autistic car because of the type of oil pump that it has uh, and the pipes that are coming out of it and they are actually loop uh, so that it can be functional. So it is my assumption that at some point that engine was actually installed into a buck and um, they converted it to an, uh, a manual stick which that can be done like that. Anyway, uh, let me go ahead and show you what we got here so you can see what I mean by that. So this is the engine that came with uh, Casper, the Rusty Bus. And as you can see here, down below the uh, crankshaft pulley, you can see pipes that are coming out so you got your supply and your return pipes. If you look up here, they were loop into one connection to make it functional. So my assumption is that at some point, this engine came out of a auto stick car and it was converted to a manual transmission. Um, now, based in facts that it spins freely. I think that this is a good engine, uh, not to mention that it's got good compression. It's only missing the generator and also it's missing the carburetor. No big deal. That can be replaced and perhaps maybe I can give it a, a start up try and see if it runs. Uh, also, one of the good things that I have noticed about this engine, it has been sitting here for quite some time now, almost a year, no oil leaks from it. That's a good sign. So my intents are to remove the engine and install whatever missing parts uh, we are lacking right now and give it a start and run it. And eventually I may be able to remove that oil pump and swap it for one that has a flat uh, a cam in it. And um, perhaps maybe I can reinstall it back here and reuse it. I don't know. Uh, again, it is always good to have a spare engine. So <clears throat> whatever happens with this engine is going to be for good. Okay, so now let's look over here. This engine that you see here. What's going on with this engine? So this engine here, I purchased it locally uh, about one town away from where I live. Uh, the story behind the engine is that the engine came off of a 1971 Super Beetle that I actually saw uh, when I went to purchase it. And uh, they drove the car from German Village all the way to Pataskala, Ohio. They drove it a couple of times around. Uh, they learned that it was leaking oils. And um, instead of just um, fixing the oil leaks, they took the engine out and swapped it for a turn a uh, key brand new engine that they purchased and had it delivered to their home and swapped it. Okay, the engine is complete. I know it's leaking oil. Uh, it was pretty filthy and dirty when I got it. So I power washed it and I got most of the excess uh, gump that was in it out so that I could at least, you know, fiddle with it until I decide what I really want to do with this engine. In the process, I knew that uh, there was a broken stud right here and 
I went to remove the stud as I would normally do where you will basically, you know, punch the center of the broken stud with a center punch. That will be your starting guide point. And then you drill it out, you retap it and you're done. But for my lock, this time I had an issue. Uh, no matter how many times I tried to drill through that stud, it was just giving me a fight. It was pretty feisty to the point that the drill bit end up slipping to the side more than what I would want it to. And it, uh, it actually end up uh, making a bigger hole than what I needed. And still that piece of stud did not want to come out. So if you look very close here at the bottom right there, I had to drill right under the stud to make some room where then I was able to take a small chisel and chisel it out by pounding it a couple of times. And I can show you the remnants of it here in a minute. But uh, I had a couple of options to fix this and eventually I will fix this head. I will uh, because I have a brand new welder machine that I can use to uh, take well aluminum. But right now um, I am running short in argon. I don't have argon. And um, then I thought about doing something else, uh, something called alumi rod bracing, which you have to heat the uh, aluminum to 730 degrees Fahrenheit and then kind of like brace it as you would normally solder copper. And I think that would work because it has a tensile strength of 40,000. But it's so cold in here. There's so many other pieces attached to this engine and aluminum is pretty good at dissipating heat so i was not uh lucky enough to be able to heat this up even though i had a, a heat gun applying heat on one end and i had a torch on the other side just a regular uh, uh mini torch that you can purchase you know at the hardware store maybe if i would have had a bigger torch or maybe oxyacetylene i think that that would have you know worked for me but I am really uh, on patience sometimes about certain things and I just wanted to get it done. Again, the plan is to correct all of the oil leaks in this engine. But here's the thing, if I'm going to correct all of the oil leaks and I am going to open this engine, I am going to do an upgrade, if that makes sense. But that's more uh, food for thought for near future projects coming. Uh, it's always good to have a spare engine. So I'm, this probably may just become my spare engine. Who knows? Anyway, what did I end up doing? So I had some uh, Permatex that it's called liquid metal. And what I did, I filled that cavity right there with a uh, dot uh, that is rated up to 4,500 PSI. There is no way that we will torque this to more than 20 pounds. Uh, so that should work for me. So that being said, now that I have uh, filled that up and it's been more than 24 hours, uh, my next step is to go ahead and drill this out and tap it and fix it. I also entertained the idea at some point of using a helicoil, which I purchased a whole kit to do a helicoil repair using an M8 uh, helicoil, which Actually, the body of the helicoil would mostly cover most of the opening of the hole, but I still had about that much, about maybe about an eighth up on top of that and maybe another eighth down here. And I didn't feel like doing that. I also contemplated the option to run a longer stud and in the back inserted, uh, a, inserted a, a nut and then had the nut actually support that. Uh, meanwhile, until I just get it started, install uh, into the band and just use it. Meanwhile, until I repair some of the rust that all of the rust that it's over around the body and then take it out and do that. But um, that didn't work because I did not have enough room to insert the nut. I ground a little bit off of one of the nuts that I had. And I could still get it in there, but it was not perfectly aligned. In order for it to actually work for me, I would have to uh, drill a bigger hole and I didn't want to go that route. In the near future, I should be able to chisel out or remove whatever uh, Permatex I, I have here and clean it up really nice once I remove the head. Take this head, 
uh, clean it up really nice, heat it up well, and then fill up that fill fill that up that gap uh, right there with aluminum and retread it as it should, if that makes sense. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and grab uh, my gasket that I have here that I will also be replacing for a new one. And I'm going to mark this here with it to make sure that I am properly aligned right there as you see that right there. I'm gonna align that. I'm going to trace this hole here with a Charpie and then I'm going to punch that in the center uh, to have a starting guy, I'm going to drill that uh, Permatex and tread it. That's what we're gonna do next. So here is the uh, a small tiny piece that was the only remnant I had left there. Um, and right there you can see where my issue began. Uh, for some reason, um, when I started drilling this out, this is the end uh, part of the stud. So in other words, this was actually facing that way in direction towards the flywheel back there. And I did start it in the right place. I started right in, you know, right on the center, but again, uh, it just some somehow it kept slipping to the side until it ended up uh, coming out uh, mostly through the side of the stud in the back. So this is the section that was facing back uh, right behind here. But anyway, the damage is now there. It's it's a it's done deal, right? It's damage is there. So now we just got to work with what we have right now. So we're gonna make this right. So what I'm doing is I'm using this gasket here, uh, which is a used gasket to align my center mark. As you can see, I already have uh, placed a tiny mark right there in the center. I'm going to use a small drill bit as a pilot, and then I will use the right tap uh, to tap it to, to eight millimeters. Okay, let's do that now. So we're gonna get started right here, and again, I'm gonna to try to get this uh, started with a small drill bit. As you can see, it already started going in. So the next thing is to make sure that I am staying in alignment. Okay, that seems like a good start. Okay, that went all the way through. Okay, that went all the way through. I'm gonna use a bigger drill bit. I'm gonna try to go easy on this one to make sure that everything is gonna work for me. There's no need to hurry. Now I'm going to open this a little bit more. Okay, that's a good start there. Now I'm going to use a bigger drill bit. Let's go with this one right here. That go all the way through. So far so good. And then I think that we can now use our bit for our tap set. I have a eight 
m millimeters, 8 millimeter, 1.25 pitch. I have the die and I have the drill bit. Let's do that now. Okay, let's see how far deep are we into that. I think that's far enough. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna show you the stud I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna be using this stud right here. And if I measure that against that right there, Oh, that's plenty right there. If you can see this here, that is way plenty more than what I need. And I only need to get this far right there. That's how far I need to get. So what we're gonna do next is, uh, I am going to use the tap piece to trip that opening i'm going to use a small crescent wrench i'm going to go slowly a few steps a few turns in step back a few a few turns in let's see Start here and Should be able to get this in by hand. So I double knotted the end of the stud to make it easy on me. I just want to see if it goes in and if it goes in easy or not. So let's try that. If you find that as you're treading this in, it's giving you resistance, then the treads are cross treaded. Something is, is wrong. Okay, so that looks like it's pretty sturdy. I don't see that there would be a problem with that. This is a temp fix. So let's see how it actually uh, works. Uh, it's not gonna be a permanent fix. I intend to remove that Permatex uh, polymer uh, liquid metal in the near future and re-weld that with proper stainless steel rods by taking into it but it will be much easier when the head is out and I can preheat it in an oven. I am pretty certain that when I tick weld it, it's going to be very solid. So I don't really see a need for me to do something else at this moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to test fit 
Uh, this with the uh, stud in there, I'm gonna test fit the exhaust that I intend to use for it. And see if the uh, stud is properly centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my exhaust and test fit it against what I have right now. Let's see what happens next. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, let's get this started. Let's see. That looks like it's going to work. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, I will have to remove it. I was just testing the fitment uh, and alignment on it, and, and it looks like it's going to work. Um, what I will do next is I will remove it and install a couple of gaskets and torque it to the right spec. Uh, but before I do that, there's something I have to do that I will share with you in the next video. So. Anyway, I just wanted to share with you a uh, quick uh, fix uh, that I did with this uh, uh, engine and the stuff that was broken in it. There are times where you just got to be creative and come up with uh, some of the uh, quick solutions that you can find out there until you find a permanent remedy. Uh, remember and keep uh, in mind, uh, just be fair with your comments about what I just did here. Uh, this is a temp fix. I just want to start the engine, see what it sounds like. Eventually, I will remove it back out from Casper, the rusty bus, and overhaul it because I want no leaks in this engine. I used the Permatex 4500 PSI liquid metal to fix that uh, on a temp basis. Uh, and I re-drill it and I tapped it. I think the key here is to actually wait the amount of time that they recommend or more. Uh, they stated to wait to wait 24 hours, on, you know, before you you did anything uh, to it. I, I waited longer than that. So I waited more than 24 hours. Keep that in mind. I'm not completely retired from restoring Volkswagen. I just haven't had uh, much time to spend with my toys, my Volkswagens. All right. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until then, this is Junior with a classic VW Bucks. Junior out.